Hey, this is Wookie from Mandala Studios. Welcome to the workshop. Today we're going through part one of making an Aoki mask sculpting. So to start with, we're going to block out the sculpt. So we've just got a bag of wet clay there. We're just going to cut off slabs of it with a clay cutter so that we've got easy to manage sections of clay to deal with. Nothing much to that. Then we're just going to apply that clay evenly over the whole surface of the head. Uh, latex shrinks about 10% as it dries, so given the head form you need to make sure your sculpt is 10% bigger to fit on the same head form and they need to modify that based around the size of the person it's for. This is for a person that's very close to the same size for the head, so adding about 6 to 10 mil all the way around roughly builds up to the size you need. So we're going to start just laying on some vague structures to the forms as we go here because we know we've got a big open mouth to deal with and brows and stuff. So as we're doing that we know we want some big bulbous eyes so we've got a ping pong ball and we cut it in half and we're going to seat that into the sculpture so that we have handy uh, forms. We're using uh, ping pong balls for this because I actually want to use ping pong balls for the eyes in the final product that will have holes in the pupils rather than any other form of eye for this one. So we just put those in place and then build up the rest of the clay around so everything sits in place and gives us a vague structure to work on our sculpture from. Then once we've got all that built up, we're going to start giving ourselves an idea of the actual forms and shapes. So we put on some blocks of clay for ears and start smoothing out some textures, not textures, forms, so we know where we're going. Using a big loop tool to start to refine the shapes a bit, hack away at the mouth. Just generally play with it to make sure it looks like the reference. I'm not sure if you get to see it, but I'm pretty sure the reference is up on the screen in front of me but I'm not sure the camera picks that up. But you can see we're just refining all the shapes, slowly getting some idea of where we're going and how it's going to work as we put it together. See there, we're putting the nasolobial folds and pulling them around the mouth. That structure wasn't in the original reference material, but guy called Matt McVeigh had some nice sculpture with a very similar mouth shape and I really liked how he did it so I stole the way it worked. You can see we're just tweaking as we go. It's all just getting those big broad shapes, making sure the mouth's in the right place so you can make the lips move very slightly as you move your mouth was a request so you need to fit everything on the hinge of the jawline. There you go, once we've got all that roughed out into position, we're going to start working on the secondary forms and refining some details. You can see it's just a similar process, but we're just now working on the ears, putting some scoops and shapes in there. We've added some random bits of monster clay for teeth so we can get a better picture of what we're looking at. And we're starting to rake down the surfaces a bit and add some details in as we go. At this point they're not really finalised details, but they're to give us an idea of what it's going to look like to make sure the structure looks right with a hint of the final details. And we're starting to add in eyelids and other such forms. Working on the details of the ears a bit, getting those structures all looking right and working on the symmetry of them.
you can see we're just gently tweaking all the shapes a bit as we go taking less and less off each time as we get closer to our final forms you see we're starting to use a succession of smaller tools in the smaller areas and details as we go now Starting to work on some of the more, even more detailed forms around the eyes and the brow and the nose now. Really starting to dial in those features. Adding eyelids folding over other bits of skin. We're now raking over the whole surface to try and get a finalised surface to work the details in from. And that's just a case of we'll go over it with rake tools in a few different directions all the way over so that we're getting rid of any loose porridgey looking surface. Everything should feel homogenised. So we'll rake over the whole surface with a variety of tools getting finer as we go until eventually we'll be brushing over it to use the basis for a skin tone. As we're doing that raking, we're still refining the shapes and positions a bit. There's much less adding material at this stage and a lot more gently moving things around and whittling things down as we go. It's a constant process of checking the references as well, make sure we're getting it to look how it's supposed to. Now we're going over, we've got the whole surface smoothed out and we're going to start adding a pore texture into the surface of the face. We're using a thimble with some bumps on it that we can rattle over the whole surface to add that pore texture. Now we just digging out sockets where the teeth are going to sit in later. Then we brush over it with talc and we'll use that to soften off all the form, all the details. And it also hardens up the surface of the water-based clay we use so it allows us to harden and soften and so we can repeat the process and get a softer arrangement. If you see there, they're my basic wrinkle tools, a wire brush and a few wire bits of wire in some handles. And you just keep laying those over in arrangement, uh, decreasing aggressiveness, then brushing them out with talc and keep building it up to get to how it, you want it to look. Back in with the plastic wire brush, put the paws back in, brush over it, and we just keep going through this process iteratively until we've got something we're happy with. Adding some lip creases and textures. It's just a very thin wire brush brushed along the lip line. Again, soften those out with the talc. Every time you soften out with the talc, you're reducing the pores and the wrinkles, so you need to be careful and just keep building it back up as you go. Don't forget to do under the chin. And that's it, pretty much. Just touching, finishing it off. Thanks very much for watching. See you again next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe.